Hello friends, it is Colleen and today I want to take you behind the scenes of my blog and YouTube channel and show you some of my top gear that I use to keep things running. Now before I dive in, I just want to state for the record that I have been running this blog and YouTube channel for quite a few years. I've just kind of accumulated this stuff over time um, and I put a lot of research into each purchase and I didn't do this all at once. So I just want to state if you are just starting out or you're not even really sure if you want to be on the other side of watching videos, um, you don't think that you have to start off with all of this kind of gear. I've gone through a few different cameras, like started off really small, something really simple and cheap, and worked my way up to the one I have now, for example. So just keep in mind, I've been doing this for a long time and uh, I worked up to this slowly. And the point of this is not to brag or to show off all of the cool gadgets I have. I just wanna give you guys an idea of all the different things that you can do to improve some of the content on your blog and your YouTube channels. So I thought I could just kind of share all that research to you so you don't have to go through all of that turmoil if you do this on your own. I'm going to start with my camera, which of course I cannot show to you right now because I am using it to film this video. So I'm going to put a little image of my camera here. I have a Canon EOS Rebel T6i. I have had this camera for two or three years now. Uh, it's still going strong. <laughs> they have newer versions of this camera out by now, but I really like this one. Um, and so a, a good tip to you if you're looking at getting a really nice camera, look at some of the models from years previous and compare some of the specs to what's currently the newest version. You might find that you don't actually need all the stuff that's in the newest version of these cameras, especially with DSLRs. Um, I don't find that there are a ton of changes year by year. Um, so this one's a great option, especially now that it's a couple years old. I shoot all of my videos on this camera that are like the tripod videos. Once in a while I take quick clips from my phone, uh, but most of the time I am using this big old camera. I bought this camera in a bundle that was for video. I don't remember what it was called, but it was some video creator bundle. That bundle was a really great way to get myself started on having this nicer camera because before I was using a non-DSLR camera and borrowing my boyfriend's mirrorless camera. Um, so. I was kind of just figuring out what I liked and I eventually decided to go with a DSLR over a mirrorless because the mirrorless I was using was overheating like crazy. I like to film one or two videos at a time and it takes quite a bit of time to film these so that wasn't gonna work for me. Uh, I think by now the technology might have improved. <laughs> that mirrorless might be the better way to go. I even had an AC adapter and not just a battery to help, help keep that heat down but it just didn't work for me at the time. Um, so that might be a little research you want to do now because mirrorless cameras are a lot smaller, so they're easier, more portable, um, especially if you are going to be carrying your camera in your hand. Um, but for most of my videos on this channel, I'm not doing that. So my DSLR works perfectly for me. Now the microphone that came with the camera, I do not use anymore. I really don't know what happened to it. I don't know if it has a faulty cord or something on it, but it stopped working and I would end up with footage that was completely silent as in the camera itself didn't even record sound. Um, or it would be all choppy and had this really weird background noise that I think was from inside the camera. Uh, but I really couldn't quite put my finger on it. I did tons of research online. I was reprogramming my camera to like help make this better and it did not get better. So I only use that microphone now with my phone if I'm gonna be doing a voice recording because for some reason it works okay when I plug it in to not my camera, but it just did not work anymore. Now, instead of that microphone, I have two different options that I use. The one that I'm using right now is actually not mine, it's my boyfriend's. Um, he uses this when he plays video games. It is a Yeti Blue mic. Um, you may have heard of this one, it's really popular um, and it's pretty well known. A lot of people use it for podcasting, um, for doing voiceovers and whatnot. I am using it right now just to record this video as a backup audio um, because the lens on my camera is a bit loud and I'll get to the lens in a second. Now to use this microphone, I just plug it in to my computer, which is sitting right here via a USB and I just record it on the computer. So I later have to line up the audio file and the video file to make sure that it's correct before I mute the video file. Um, but this has really cut out a lot of weird background noise, noises inside the camera, um, and just provides like a higher quality sound. With this microphone, I do have a small pop screen on it or a pop filter, um, and it's 
just something I grabbed off Amazon for really cheap. It works out great. Um, and later on, as I venture into doing other things, like maybe doing a podcast at some point, I know that this setup will work out really, really well for me. My second option for a microphone is a bit more portable. It is this lapel mic. You may have seen this in a couple of my videos when I'm a little bit too lazy to get this other setup going. Um, and I just plug this in to this Zoom H1N handy recorder. This is, I don't think the newest version of this, uh, I don't remember. The setup is super simple. I just plug the lapel mic into this recorder. I turn this on and press record. Um, and this has a micro SD card in it to actually hold all the data. I like this option because it is more portable. So if I'm going to be moving around quite a bit or turning my head, um, this option works out a lot better than the microphone that's sitting right in front of me because I have to speak in this direction for it to pick up the best sound. I've also used this option when I'm doing quick vlogging clips. Um, so if I don't wanna use the audio from my phone, um, I'll just plug this in really quick and just turn it right on. So this is a really speedy option to get good quality sound. All right, sorry for the sound detour there, but I thought that was a good segue from the microphone that did not work anymore. Um, so now I'm gonna get back to the camera. So the lens that I am using is the Canon EF EFS lens. It's a 10 to 22 millimeter lens. Um, I picked this up because I was using the lens that came with the camera. Um, and this one is, I forget, 18 to 55 millimeters. So this is like a very kind of multi-purpose, all use kind of lens. This is why it comes with the camera because it's the most generally usable lens to people. I found that in my videos, I wasn't getting enough of a picture. Um, so I could get like pretty much just my face and it felt very confined. So I wanted to get a lens that would sort of open up the visuals here so you could see a little bit more of my screen. I can sit a little closer to the camera um, because before I was sitting like way back, um, far away. And now I can pull myself right up to my little table here to record. Um, I can actually reach my camera from here. So this option works out really well for me. But of course, lenses on DSLR cameras are crazy expensive. I only bought this, I think within the last year. Um, and I've been saving up for it for quite a while. So it is definitely kind of a splurge purchase and really up to like my personal preference on how I want my videos to look. I still use both lenses interchangeably. I find that the lens that came with the camera is much better for my product photos for my blog. And I do still record video on this once in a while. Um, I, it really depends on what I'm working on. So I use both lenses interchangeably. And honestly, right now, I don't think I need any other lenses. So that's great because these are very expensive. An absolute must for my camera is a backup battery. I like to film at least one video at a time. I tend to film maybe two or three. Um, so I really need to have something readily available for when I kill my battery because I always do. For some reason, I cannot get an AC adapter for this camera or any camera for that matter. I guess people just don't buy those anymore uh, because Canon no longer makes AC adapters for this camera. Um, I am on a wait list forever and ever and ever <laughs> for if they ever do come back with them. In the meantime, I have a second battery and a charger. So anytime I kill the battery, I put the new one in right away. I take the dead one right away and just plug it into charge. So as soon as I finish filming, I can just shut off my camera and then this one is generally charged within one or two hours. So I am never with a dead battery here because I just, I really can't handle that. That used to happen to me all the time back in the day when I did not have multiple batteries. So I really think that if you are going to be doing this and you buy a camera, as you buy the camera, buy a battery. Ideally an AC adapter, but again, I, I must be really old because no one wants those anymore. Another camera accessory I have is a tripod. Um, I know a lot of YouTubers joke about not having or needing these. Um, they will show you like their weird setups to like get the right height. I think you should just get a tripod. Um, I bought this one as soon as I started making videos. Like I basically bought a really cheap camera and a tripod right away because I didn't want to deal with making weird stacks of things that I could never touch ever again because I wanted to get the same sort of look for each video. So I bought a tripod off Amazon. It was really not expensive. I think it was like $14. I have been using it uh, for about four years with no problems at all. I use this all the time for my videos like right now. I use it to take um, some of my photos once in a while and I like that I can get some weird angles. So 
when I am trying to show myself doing something like in a DIY or if I'm painting my nails or some other weird thing that it's impossible to get video of, a tripod is 100% necessary. It just cuts out a lot of that turmoil as you are trying to get the right angle and lean things on top of each other and hope you don't break everything. Because honestly, if you are going to invest in a nice camera, you don't want to break it because it fell off of your weird setup. That would just be heartbreaking. So I definitely recommend just finding a tripod. I will link the one that I have down below uh, because I really like it. I've never had any problems. Another thing I cannot show you right now is my light. Um, so I have a floor length ring light. I set it right next to me when I'm filming. I cannot quite fit it behind the camera yet. I am kind of rearranging things in my room right now, but as of right now, the light sits right here to balance out the light I'm getting from the window on the other side. I've had this light for three years now. Um, I've never had an issue with it. It came with all these accessories and one of the accessories was this little white, uh, like, not like a cloth. What is this? It's just like a fabric little light diffuser that goes on top um, and I definitely needed that. So if you're looking for a ring light and you don't want to get the one I got, maybe you want something a little bit fancier. Um, I definitely recommend getting some sort of diffuser with it. Lighting is a pretty good investment if you know that you are going to do videos. So if you have been playing around with it and you've tried making a couple videos, maybe you've started a channel and have some content going, um, I recommend lighting as a good next step, probably even before getting a separate microphone because every camera tends to have a built-in microphone, uh, but the lighting is something that you really don't have control over until you buy lighting. For years, I would just film with the window. Um, so you may remember on this channel, I used to have my whole setup turned this way. So you would be seeing everything behind me, like my bed and my closet. Lighting gives you the ability to not be tied to your windows or what time of day it is. There was one video actually back in the day. I think this was in like 2014. It, it like got dark while I was filming. Um, and it was the funniest footage to look back on because it was like, very, very slowly you could see the lighting changed and then like suddenly it was like pitch black. So don't let that happen to you, uh, as funny as that was. <laughs> and I think I still posted the video, um, but having the lighting just really saves you a lot of grief. So I just found that I can be a lot more flexible with my schedule now and it's just worth it. Now, another thing that I found I really liked having is a portable light. Uh, so this is actually like a cell phone selfie ring light. Um, it just has a little button on top and it has three different levels of brightness, which I just tried to show you and you could not see because it's daytime. Um, but this is actually pretty powerful and I've used this not just for photos, but even when I'm filming at home. I would say the most common way that I use this is for photos or for doing like little clips on my phone. Um, I don't always use this for product photos because I just use my big light. Um, but when I'm out and about and I don't have a full setup with me, this thing is a lifesaver. I think this was around $20, maybe a little bit less. Um, so this thing was like really cheap and it has implications outside of my blogging life because I can just bring this if I'm going to hang out with some friends and we wanna take photos. It's just really nice to have this with me because everyone looks really, really good with a ring light. All right, another phone accessory I have is a little phone tripod. But this thing is great because um, I, I have trouble standing it on its own, but it can in theory just stand like this. Um, but what I like to use it for is to wrap it around stuff. It also makes holding the phone easier. So if I am taking a clip of something or if I'm walking while taking a clip, having it in here, I can just put the legs in and hold it like this. Um, it makes the whole thing smoother. It makes my arm a lot less tired. Now I use a few tools when I'm editing. Um, so first off, I use Final Cut Pro for Mac to actually edit my videos. I have been using this software for a really long time um, since I started on YouTube. And let's see, I used to use it on my MacBook Pro. I think it was a 2010 or 2011 MacBook Pro. Uh, it got real difficult <laughs> near the end uh, before I upgraded my laptop in 2015, I believe. But now I mostly do my editing on a desktop computer because I have a desktop computer now, which is great. Um, when I was in college, I just like did not bother with that. 
But anyway, uh, I know that there are a lot of different video uh, editing softwares out there, especially nowadays. I feel like a ton of them are available now for all different price points. Um, so this is another one where I think you should still do your own research. I really like Final Cut Pro. I've also used Adobe Premiere. Um, and I really like that one as well, but it's very expensive because it's on a subscription, so you can pick and choose. Um, and there are, again, there are some good free and low cost options out there if you're just getting started. Um, I actually, I think before I got Final Cut Pro, I used iMovie um, and that worked out pretty well. You can't really do a ton of fancy stuff, but if you're really just, you know, cutting clips and moving them around and adding some easy animations and titles, you really don't need a fancy video software. Um, I like to use a fancier software because I use things like keyframes, I will move text around, um, and I have a bunch of transitions that I've bought or added um, to my collections. I have also used like green screens and stuff before, not on this channel, but just generally. Um, so I found that I really use the more advanced features. Um, but it's really just up to you. The last thing that I have here to show you are my headphones. Um, so I use these Bose, uh, they're noise canceling, I forget what they're called, quiet comfort headphones, I think. Um, and these are the ones with the cord. Um, I also have these without the cord, so I have the Bluetooth version as well. Um, but I actually, for video editing, like to actually plug it directly into my computer. I find that the audio is a bit clearer and I'm able to edit a lot more quickly because I don't have to wait for the Bluetooth to connect to the sound. I actually don't even use the noise canceling on these very often. It's just a little on off switch on the side and there's a battery in here. Um, so it's really optional if you want to turn on the noise canceling. I don't think I really need it uh, because these cover my entire ear, so it blocks out a lot of noise on its own. Wow, I sound really weird trying to talk with those on my head. Oh, I forgot one thing. Um, I use an external hard drive to store a lot of my footage. Um, I used to use this hard drive exclusively for videos back when I used my laptop as my only way to edit and post my videos because I found that it would crash and lose stuff a lot um, and I didn't have any room. <laughs> so um, if you are in that situation, I highly recommend getting an external drive. Um, it just helps to have something that has all of your footage and all of your latest files. So if something happens to your computer, you have a backup. I have a WD My Passport Ultra. I have had this thing for a few years. It's been going strong, still kicking. I don't use it to back up everything anymore because now I have a desktop computer, but I do use it when I'm traveling. Um, if I need to bring some videos or work with me, I will just use the external drive because it already has some of my Final Cut settings in it. That is all I have to share with you today. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope that you found this useful, taking a little deep dive into all my stuff. Uh, and I hope that this gave you some inspiration or guidance if you are in the market for any of these items. Thanks again for watching. And if you're looking for me, you can find me at any of the social media handles that you'll see down in the description box. Or as always, you can find me at brofreebeauty.com. Thanks for spending some time with me today and I will see you next time. Bye. Oh, 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 oh,